what's happening guys chris va travels here in upper manhattan i'm headed to the grange home of alexander hamilton i'm about two blocks away check out these row houses cornice is up there pretty cool and yeah gonna check this place out check this car out All right. The Grange Eatery. Maybe on my way out of here, that place will be open. Maybe I'll stop by. Right here, there's the back of it. And I'm about to hop in and take a tour. And uh, old Gothic, uh, Looks like maybe it was a church, kind of covered up. It looks like it's being worked on. A bunch of warehouses over here. And I'll, I'll stop and read this plaque once they're done. Actually, let me walk down and just read this sign. Another church down here on the corner. And yeah, this thing was built in 1802 two years before Hamilton died. We know how he died. <laughs> and uh, all right, so just talking about it, one of the framers of the Constitution, first uh, Secretary of the Treasury. And this is the home's third location. Yeah, and it's still sitting on the original grounds owned by Hamilton. And it was originally about a mile from the Jumel Morris house, which I've done a video on, go check it out. And at one time, Aaron Burr actually lived there, so. Uh, yeah, all right, so let me uh, read this plaque before I go in. Ooh. Okay. All right, grid it out, and these are the three locations where the house is. Uh, then, yeah, it was moved here in 2008. And it looks like at one time it was moved 1889. It was used as part of a church, St. Luke's. And there it is, it was his country retreat. The yeah, original house was in Harlem, right by that Jumel Morris. And yeah, he attended school at Columbia University, which isn't too far away. I actually got off at the Columbia stop uh, on the one train. Uh, anybody coming out here, it's the 137, the stop, 137th Street. And this was supposed to be his Eden. All right, and he didn't design the house, but he had a lot to do with the design. And apparently those, he was born in the West in Indies, and apparently those po the porches were supposed to re remind him of the West Indies. So, all right, let me pause and read. Uh, actually, this is just talking about the garden, which he designed, some wild roses, some dogwoods. And let me tell oh, wow, look at that building behind it. Oh, the sun's nailing it. If I get a little closer, maybe I can, uh, Oh, yeah, so yeah, and these porches were actually rebuilt. They had to be removed uh, when the house was moved. Two of those chim chimneys apparently are fake to give it a symmetrical look. Uh, balusters up there, and this is a federal style building. Just wrap around before I go in for the house tour, a little stone wall right here. Okay, good, yeah, sun's behind it. I'm gonna ask what this building is. Whoa, watch my step. All right, let me zoom in. Pretty cool. All right, so let me wrap around. You'll see kind of an octagon bay protruding right there. Windows up top hatched up. Another stoop over here. And there's a little write up. Let me just walk over here real quick. And you'll see we're on the uh, heights, almost like a cliff, it almost looks like. So let me just see what this says real quick. Yeah, it looks like that thing's made of stone. Uh, oh, all right. So this is blank. And yeah, this actually reminds me of when I was at the Jumel Morris house. She had a bunch of 
rock like that up on the heights out here. Good shot of the front. Yeah, it could use a paint job, a little bit of work, but anyway, let me find the entrance, take the house tour. All right, so I see a plaque over there and it says Hamilton Grange, okay. And all right. Another, another one of these octagonal bays protruding. Maybe that takes you into the basement. So, yeah, I hope they're open. It looks like this is roped off. Ah, welcome to the Grange. Da, da, da. Entrance is below the steps. Oh, so right down there, it looks like there's the gift shop. Okay, cool. Okay. Checked out the egg and dart pattern on the corners up there. Dining room, three sashes on those windows. You could pull them up to create doors. <laughs> Over here on this stand, looks like they had some pewter. Okay, so there he is with his wife. And yeah, with the open windows, get a good, pretty good cross breeze into the room over here. So, who remembers what year was the house moved the first time? That year, 1888? No, actually, 1888. This desk is a reproduction, and it actually appeared in the musical. watching a, a film on Hamilton. A little timeline back here. As I've said 10 times, born down in the Caribbean, 1755. Uh, Elizabeth Schuler, Schuyler, Schuler. Uh, sure I pronounced that wrong. Attends the Constitutional Convention. Yeah, son died in a duel. And there he is, died at the hands of Aaron Burr. 1802, the Grange was completed. And maybe there used to be a fireplace right here. What is this? The stencil shows the example of what a kitchen fireplace looked like in Hamilton's time. Okay. The original property was 32 acres and we're on the original property. Pretty nice. Oh, this is Lafayette, okay. Marquis de Lafayette. As I said, this is his rural retreat, his summer home. Uh, there's the good stuff. Look up, a gap in the plaster overhead, expose the wood framing above the ceiling. Uh, model of the house. Like I said, just a stoop over here. As I said outside, the porch is supposed to remind him of the Caribbean where he was born. There's these four internal chimneys. Cool balustrade across the top. Okay, a hip roof up here. I didn't notice that when I was outside. All right, gonna take a quick walk through the museum.
and I'm going to have to go backwards through the timeline. <laughs> All right, so over here, this is a morning scarf and uh, apparently it was popular to wear these at the time. But yeah, there's a bust of Hamilton right there. It says the hut with palm trees was to represent his birthplace in the Caribbean. Tree trunk with the miss missing branches symbolizes Hamilton's premature death. Image of the African Americans uh, represents his opposition to slavery. And here's a picture of the dueling pits pistols. I'm sure you know the story of he and Burr. And yeah, he was shot over there in Jersey, brought over here, died the next day. He did get to see his wife and children before he died. And there's a picture right there. And apparently back then, if you called somebody a puppy, I think if you replace those P's with S's, that's what you would be saying today. And those were fighting words. <laughs> okay, so looks like he first got the idea for this place in 98. Four years later, it came to fruition. And he called it a, uh, his sweet project to his wife. And his son actually died in, in a duel as well, Philip. So just three years earlier. And this is Harlem when it was a countryside 200 years ago. So a lot of farms. Like I say, we're going backwards. with the Jefferson frenemies or is that Madison uh, yeah here's a newspaper he created the New York Evening Post and it was to support his Federalist Party yeah he had a little bit of a spat with Adams creating a government Obviously, he was in favor of a big government. Hamilton Jefferson, Jefferson small government. So there's always been that divide between the North and South. Uh, brilliant uh, political and economic mind. And let's see how he explained his views in the reports to Congress on public credit manufacturing and the National Bank and they were nothing less than an outline for modern, uh, the modern capitalist economy. Oh yeah, first capital obviously was up in New York, moved down to Philly, and then on to DC. Still going backwards. All right, my Betsy Elizabeth Schuler. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Like I say, I'm not as familiar with the uh, with the figures up here in New York. Okay, so it looks like Washington up on the raised platform. Colonel Hamilton. He, he was aide de camp to George Washington. Here's his commission. And he saw action, obviously Yorktown, <clears throat> also Princeton, White Plains, and Monmouth. He attended, like I say, that King's College, which is now Columbia University, which is just a couple miles, a mile away. And he actually quit school to join the American Revolution. Hamilton's New York. Yeah. And at the time, only 25,000 residents as opposed to eight and a half million now. But obviously it's a lot larger. It used to be just lower Manhattan, which just New York at the time. Oh, over here. As I said, born out of the Caribbean, in the V 1755, he was orphaned. And if you have seen the play, you know the story. See if I can get a shot of the other side here. And over here is family tree. I won't go into detail on that. You can pause and read, but yeah, his descendants. Cool. All right, just finished the tour. As I said, it was packed in there. 
Unfortunately, I'm not gonna, not gonna have too much footage of the inside. Oh, in this big Gothic looking church uh, is St. Luke's. And the house used to be just right over there in that gap. And it's uh, pretty crazy how they moved it. They had to lift it up and over the church. It's pretty insane. And had it moved over here to its third spot. So like I say, that was the second uh, location. And the first was over on 143rd Street, just two blocks over. We're on 141st right now. So, all right, gonna get out of here. I was hoping to hit Grant's tomb today, but my first sight kind of held me up. I was on a really long tour. Uh, if you're a docent out there, 45 minutes is probably the sweet spot uh, for a tour. Uh, anyway, so I'm gonna try to hit it tomorrow and I'm going to do hopefully a walking tour of Roosevelt Island. So. Anyway, uh, yeah, see you guys on the next one.